Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to GameStar TV and our continuing coverage of the Season 4, the Blizzard ANZ Season 4 Heroes of the Storm qualifiers. Uh, brought to you all season by GameStar TV. No last chance ODC this season. Four teams go through from the GameStar qualifiers into the finals. It's going to be a LAN final. There are massive cash prizes. Like, if you don't know that Blizzard is giving $20,000 per season of cash prizes away uh well now you do um so you should be getting a team together uh kit fox uh if if you don't if if play, players play mobas they should be getting involved uh in heroes of the storm in the anz region well mate, it's not only blizzard that are getting behind uh the competitions at the moment throwing the cash at it a couple of orgs are, as well are getting behind it i mean dark side have been the obvious one milkshake i believe we can count them as an orb to start things off i believe that there was other interest coming our way from uh, teams like fixtrum uh we're hoping to get involved as well so it's just going from strength to strength at the moment crisis but we're going to go over to milkshake now Versus Mad Cos Bad, we've had Dragon Shire, we've had Tomb of the Spider Queen, we're now going over to Cursed Hollow. And apologies for Kit Fox, Robo Voice. Hopefully that's all fixed, but now we're going to jump straight into this one. So once again, it is a good evening to my analyst, co caster GL Phoenix. Thank you very much, Kit. Uh, I'm sure we'll be fine, uh, robot or not, we'll be able to get through <laughs> this just fine. But as you mentioned, it is going to be Milkshake up against uh, Mad because Bad and... As uh, Crisis was mentioning earlier, there was a bit of a, a little bit of a dispute at the end of last week about uh, some of the tiebreakers. But now we get I to mean, see. Hang on, which, uh, let me just yeah. jump in there. Let, let's be let's be clear. We were approached by a couple of a uh, couple of people, and uh, one of them was the captain of Milkshake, and it wasn't really a dispute. He was really uh, like a fantastic way that he approached us, just making the inquiry and, and saying, "Look, can you look into this for us?" Um, and you know, did so with absolute pleasure. Um, and as a result, we released the competitive ruling that we did today, where we're in introducing the head-to-head -head, uh, tiebreaker instead of using the kind of the algorithmic uh, way of doing so. So uh, that's my piece. I'll step back uh, and back to you, uh, GLP. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Perfect timing as we are getting these first picks out of the way. The bands are actually rather interesting, but not usually. Uh, usually we've been seeing a lot of those first bands being targeted towards those the support, the supports of the Tassadai and the Oriole, but now it's going towards the melee assassins of the uh the illidan and the mouth ale but that is leaving that test out and that is going to be the first pick coming up for milkshake yeah milkshake knows what they're about versing mad cause bad formerly known as we met at bunnings they come together for their shared love of sausage and now they've gone and made a heroes of the storm team and we love them for that they've had a good showing throughout the few uh, few seasons that they have been involved i think this is their third season mm -hmm. And hopefully, GLP, hopefully, fingers, toes, everything crossed, we get ourselves a land final. We've been promised it, now we want it. But yes, Tassadar being picked up for the milkshake lads. Malfiel off the board, and Illidan off the board for Mad Cos Bad. Now they're going to lock in Oriel and Dahaka. So extremely strong heals, mm. along with extremely strong global presence. Yeah, they pick up two incredible power picks on the side of uh, Mad Cos Bad. As you mentioned, the, the global presence coming out of the Dahaka and... Cursed Hollow, it's a map where you very much want to play that global style. It is a very big map, and if you're able to have just uh, members all over the place managing to get experience here, there, and everywhere while also applying a lot of pressure, it's very strong. And also the Oriole, we've seen a band uh, almost every game so far uh, this evening, and I'm pretty sure we'll see just why if we manage to uh, see her get one of those nice batteries under her belt. It'll be interesting to see what they go for. Cursed Hollow, one of those maps where you do need to have the staying potential, similar to the Dragon Shy, but there's a lot more narrow choke points that you can fight in on this map. So Tassadar will definitely make sure that he'll be the bully that he needs to be uh, when going uh, and fighting over those altars. Yeah, and he will be able to uh, facilitate right uh, quite a few heroes. And yeah, Brightwing, it's one of those heroes that sure you're not going to have as much uh pressure when it comes to the global uh global side of things but it does give you some more options to work with uh to try and contest that to Hucker. yes you're not going to be able to push him out of lane on your own he just has way too much when it comes to the wave clear sustainability durability and pushing power uh that the brightwing just really can't handle but she will at least be able to uh at least stick around and just catch some of that experience while still being able uh to jump in uh 
to help out the team at a moment's notice. So just wanting to uh, at least hold on to some uh, way to answer that to Haka. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what they pair with that Oriel. That's my number one concern, or my number one interest for this map, Geo Phoenix, is what will we give Oriel to charge up that hope? But now they've got the second ban. They did take away Illidan, who is known uh, to be able to take away, um, to take away, uh, sorry, to cause Oriel a fair bit of uh, strife. But now Abatha being taken off the board for Mad Cause Bad. So they obviously know what they don't want to deal with, and that is <laughs> the old meme slug. Yeah, he is incredibly powerful on this map, and when you have a Greymane paired up with that Avatar, he can get incredibly dangerous, especially once we hit level 10, get those ultimate evolutions, having double Greymane. Uh, what's one? What's more scary than a Greymane diving after you is a second one that has literally no fear of dying. <laughs> yeah. He does, he does hurt, no matter if it's the clone or if it's just, you know, the general Grey Man cocktail does so much damage. And then if they choose to go for go for the throat, I mean, yeah, the, the dive is extremely strong. But now Uther being taken off the board for the Milkshake Lad. So Malthiel Uther, Illidan, Abatha will be the bands for Cursed Hollow. Mad Cos Bad, now they get their choice. Will they pick the Valar? Will they go for somebody like the Zul? Or will they go for, even Jaina finds a lot of value on this map. Yeah, I'm just starting to look at the potential batteries, as you are mentioning. The Valley is one of those options that is one of the primary options, but we're starting to see uh, some teams start to move away from the Valley and more towards things like the Lunara, who can do just as much damage, uh, sometimes even more from a safer distance than the Valor, while also being a very powerful battery for that Oriole. So we're not too surprised to see them go towards that, but they're going to be leaving that to the last pick. They are going to be going for that double support regardless uh, with that Karazim, but they already have an incredibly solid uh, lineup. They just need to finish it off with that DPS and battery. Yeah. They do need a very, very strong DPS coming into their final pick. Looking at the lineup, uh, it depends what Karazim goes. I mean, he's got that uh, ability to go really whatever you need. And if you have a battery as strong as Oriel, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a DPS Karazim. But hey, we'll leave that to the imagination, at least until we get into the game. But Milkshake now with their last two picks, they lock in Cassia. So smart pick there, considering there is a lot of physical attack coming out on the side of Mad Cosbad and the ETC. Now, Oriel can detainment strike that away, but other than that, there's really not much control for ETC there. Well, uh, as long as you don't, uh, as long as uh, Nubarak is not going to get it, going to be getting locked down by the ETC, he will have a couple of options uh, with the Impale, maybe the Cocoon, should he go towards that. But one thing I'm very interested to see is, is this Cassia. I, I think it's uh, coming in as a potential deterrent from the Valor, because mm. uh, Cassia are very good against just auto-attacking heroes who uh, get punished by that blind so very much. And Valor doesn't necessarily have enough uh, range to try and keep her at, at an arm's length and uh, still be uh, valuable to the team. So, And if that Valor is getting locked down, then the Oriole's not getting the healing and th the whole composition will pretty much crumble from there. So I think it's a very strong pickup uh, uh, of that Cassia. I'm just very, very interested Ooh, to see. Will they do it he's, anyway? He's going to go for it anyway. I was kind of hoping for the Lunaras. I feel that would have been a much better uh, pick into what uh, Milkshake, Milkshake have picked up. But it is going to be that Valor regardless. So very interested to see uh, how they're going to be playing this out because that's a lot of uh, pressure being put onto the Valor player for this composition. I mean, you, they were thinking about it. You could tell. They ran down the clock in its entirety. They would have looked at Cassia and just gone, oh, hang on a minute. This might just force us to change things up. Like you mentioned, the Lunara potential option. You wouldn't go something like the Rainer either. Extremely strong single target, but with a blind, he's extremely useless. So Milkshake versus Mad Cos Bad on Cursed Hollow. GLP, who do you think will take this one out? Ooh. I was really liking the look of the uh, Mad Cos Bad lineup, but... That those last couple of picks of that Cassia and then the Valor, I think that may have swung it just a little bit more in favor of Milkshake for me. They have a global pressure, a global presence to try and contest the Dahaka on that in that side, and they have a lot of tool. They have a lot of damage on that lineup with the Cassia, with the Greymane, and as as long as this ETC uh, plays within his boundaries and doesn't go uh, a little bit too balls to the wall and gets himself caught out, I think that Milkshake could very well have this one. 
Tacky own straight for the charge strikes to start things off, but it's Milkshake versus Mad Cosbad, ladies and gentlemen. It's round number three of week two here at the GameStar and Blizzard ANZ HGC qualifiers. Milkshake is Coffee Clubber on Greymane. The Ratza is playing Tassadar. Crazy Dave on Brightwing. ETC is as of the Cat. And Magic Gnome is going to be on Cassia. And on the red side, we have Mad because bad. We have Tanner on Anubarak, RG on the Karazim, Tagiza given all of the power on the Valor. Jester is on to Harker and Helium. Going to bring in the heels on the Oriole. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And now Mad Cosbad on the red team. They start to go down the bot. There's not going to be a punch on up the top lane. Look where Milkshake is setting up here. Already going and taking that, that top tower. And Coffee Clubber on Greymane almost took the wall as well. Got that down to half health. So now the rotation comes from Mad Cos back. Your Nan Cocktail getting a good, a good start onto the uh, onto the first mutant wave. And that's where it's all going to go down. Geo Phoenix, the Sonic Storm comes out. All G being extremely aggressive on that Cassidy, and he has gone for Iron Fist, but that doesn't really give away much just yet. We'll see if he decides to put the spec into full DPS or the hybrid build. Yeah, he is. that monk is going to be punching people regardless of which build he goes yeah. for. He's going to be throwing hands left, right, and center. And uh, as long as this Valor is able to keep on dealing the damage, uh, we'll be able to keep this healing coming in for the Oriole, but the rats are taking a lot of damage. The Dimensional Shift is just, just there in time to keep him alive. But they have to be very careful. They don't have healing in this, as, or as efficient healing in this lane as uh, Mad because Bad have. Brightwing is down in the bottom lane, all by his lonesome, but they've got shields from the Ratta. Will it be enough? I don't think so, because when you're coming up against somebody who has as massive heals as Oriel, I know where my money is going to be. On the sustain of Oriel, especially when paired with the Valor battery, now the Ratta just uh, being a pest with those psionic storms. The wave clear on Milkshake, though, is extremely good. Yeah, it, it's... We, we, we started to see that when they started to trade, it did end up going in favor of Mad because Bad. And then Milkshake realized, okay, we, we just have to be a little bit more careful. We'll just trade waves and uh, at least equalize this pressure. And now they're starting to move towards uh, some of the mercenary camps, getting them as early as possible. But the Grand Man is able to do it on his own, but with that little bit of extra help from the Raptor on the Tasta, he's able to be so much more healthy as we get out of this, as we are still waiting for these first shrines to start popping up around the map. Yeah, very, very soon. You can see the two melees going head to head in the middle. That's Tanner versus Azov the Cat, ETC versus Danubarak, and almost like an open book, the Mad Cosbad, they decide to take the siege camps of their own. So, siege camps, both teams, respectively, top and bottom lane, are now pushing away at each other. Tanner does well to dodge Gilna and Cocktail, but in comes Magic Gnome from the top lane on Cassia and throwing out the uh, just tons of damage when you proc charge strikes those auto attacks are just going to be so so strong and there's not really anything to deal with that no blind uh to counter cassia on the side of mad calls bad yeah the one thing that's essentially going to be their counter to it is just the amount of healing numbers coming out of the uh mad because bad lineup we've got the oreo we've got the karazim and that's oh. essentially their response to the amount of damage coming out uh, they don't, as you mentioned, they don't have blinds, they don't have very efficient ways of dealing with it. They have a rather durable frontline with the Anubarak and the Dahaga, but if the Valor is going to end up getting caught out at any point in this game, a lot of this composition can end up just falling apart. I like how Magic Gnome was able to rotate from the top lane there. He saw that Azog the Cat was having a little bit of a tough time uh, against the Nubarak, came in with the blinding light, in with the fend, and just made his presence known, forcing the uh, forcing the milk, uh, the Mad Cos Badlands just to retreat a little bit. Uh, we do have a pause going on here. The rats are just a little bit of a disconnect. GG, Australian internet. We've said it time and time again, but we're back in. It's good to see that the pauses aren't going uh, for an extremely long time as Ratsa comes back on the Tassadar. Extremely important member for Milkshake. And again, you can see the Lightning Fury coming out on Cassia, just creating the zoning effect that they need. But in goes the Burrow Charge, finds it onto Greymane, being an absolute pest. As we get the, uh, the Tribute Dance, it begins. Yeah, and with a decent amount of... Uh, poke with that just on the Valor herself and also with the Impale coming out of an Uberak, they should be able to stall this out for just a little bit longer as, as the uh, the blinds are coming in so Magic Gnome is able to at least do a fair bit of damage as we're seeing it come through with those charged strikes and 
You have to be very careful with how they go ahead with this uh, contestant. Charge Strikes bouncing away. Old G going in, getting the old 1 2 combo. Ooh. The Ratsa seems to have left the game again, so we might have to get another pause on here. It's come at the worst time as they're duking it out for the first tribute. But here comes Crazy Dave on the Bright Wing, utilizing that global to perfection, coming in and just leveling it up. He realizes with the Rats are down, we need some sort of sustain, some kind of heals up there that isn't controlled by an AI bot. And Greymane is the first one to go down. That'll be first blood over to Mad Cos Bad. Poor old Ratsa as the first tribute goes over to MCB. Yeah, a bit of an unfortunate situation there with the rats uh, just having that minor dis disconnection, but they did manage to only lose the minimum when it comes to that fight, only losing the one member, but we're starting to see the experience really uh, start to go in favor of Mad Because Bad. We have a, a half-level lead in their favor, so... Uh, and actually, we see on the bottom side, in rotation, Tano is just being a nuisance, trying to delay this rotation towards the bottom lane as much as possible, allowing Jester on this Dahaka to just put as much pressure on the lane as possible, and just forcing as much damage onto these outer uh, structures as possible before we get into the, 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 the mid-stage of the game where we can really start to see these uh, uh, forts really crumble. So a good phase shift came up from Crazy Dave. Didn't actually lure the Brush Stalker out of uh, Jester on the Dahaka. He realized with an open lane, that's where you need to capitalize. So the Tribute now spawning again on the top side of the map. This could go anybody's way, but there's only the Rats are there to contend on Tassadar. And in comes Magic Gnome from the mid lane, just rotating. All G being an absolute nuisance on that Karazim. But now the lockdown comes onto the Giza, and uh, he manages to vault away. That was extremely close. The Mending Spirit coming out from Karazim. But is it the Rats are going to go down? No! We mentioned will shift away just in time, and in comes Crazy Dave again with a base shift on the right wing. These charge strikes are doing work for Magic Gnome. Lightning Fury in defend. It's all the Cassia show here to start things off, but Azov the Cat's in trouble. He goes down, as does Tassadar. So two frags for Mad Cos Bad, and this is the grudge match we were hoping for, oh. but they want more. They're hungry for blood. Magic Gnome is jumping away into the Impale. In comes all G, giving that little bit of heals from the Karazim, and Tana on the Anubarak, combining with his team, and they get the frags. Now they turn their attention to the top boss. Well, oh, very, very close there for Mad because Bad. They were essentially walking a tightrope with that fight. If they started to lose those members, it would have just absolutely crumbled. The, the tribute did end up going over to Milkshake. They were able to get out, get that for themselves, but because the, they spent so much time just channeling that point, there was a lot of DPS just uh, not being used in that fight, and it ended up being the deciding factor with uh, the the Valor staying alive for so long, managing to get just enough DPS out uh, to get the hope in for the Oriole to keep the rest of the team alive and to get those couple of kills in at, at the back end of that fight. So nicely done there. They are going to be able to get their heroics right now, and they have a little bit of time to work with uh, where they will have that advantage, and they're going to use this to go for the uh, other boss on, on the other side of the map. Fairy Fire coming out from Crazy Dave on top of the boss. He knows that it's fighting now, duking away. Meanwhile, there are two members of Milkshake up in the top lane dealing with the top boss. This isn't going to be a throw unless they pull off some kind of miracle. Mad Cos Bad have got the level advantage here. They, they if, Milkshake, if Milkshake can actually get the level 10, but no, they won't be able to. They've got the oh, boss, but no. Cocoon has landed onto Brightwing. Crazy Dave is in trouble. And here come Mad Cos Bad. Oh, eat a sausage from Bunnings, boys. Well done. They get themselves that kill the boss is doing work on the bottom but the top boss didn't actually get the tower so nonetheless they take the advantage they still have the level advantage too and uh, this is just too good coming out here from mad cause bad they continue to apply pressure it's five versus zero in terms of kills another tribute and this is where milkshake really need to contest because a curse at this point could be disastrous yeah this is where you need to be very careful with how you play around the map the etc is there to try and at least stall it for a while while the rest of the team deals with this boss. But this is going to get really dangerous for Milkshake. We do have the Brightwing coming in to help out with the stalling, but already Mav uh, is bad or uh, have the position around the point and there's just no way in. It looks like they want to try and get fight to try and just get some kills before anything happens. Rain of Vengeance, and but a Crystal Age is coming out here from Helium just uh, go landing on top of Jester there, and here comes these charge strikes, and well the Lightning Fury from Magic Gnome on the Cassia, doing work, but a good force wall coming out from the Ratsa on Tassadar. Azov the Cat was able to power slide away, but in comes OG, Face Melt, and Emerald Wind, just to separate Mad Cos Bad. They've got the curse on their side, and Milkshake know that they need to defend here. 
Yeah, they are going to be losing quite a few structures here thanks to this curse. They will be able to at least hold on to their keeps, which is uh, the most important thing. They're, they will be losing this fort, but it's uh, a rather small price to pay for this curse. And if they are manage, if they do manage to hold on to enough of their structures, I think they'll be rather happy with that they only lost a few things here and there uh, for, the, for the cost of a curse. So... They are still a fair bit behind. They're down two levels. They're down that talent tier. And unless they're able to pick off this Valor very early on in a fight, I'm not really sure how uh, Milkshake are going to be able to get back into these fights. They oh, need to hunting. get that very, very crucial pick, and they're just not able to get it just yet. They're hunting at the Mad Cos Bad Lads. They know that Milkshake were nowhere to be seen on the map. The uh, minions were pushed into the top and the bottom lanes. They must be at a camp, surely, and Mad Cos Bad read that very, very well, and they managed to steal it after Milkshake did a lot of the work for them. But here comes Ball Lightning, but no value, because a very good Impale coming out from Tanner on the Inubarak to stop any sort of collapse that Milkshake are going to push. This cape is going to be taken down, but let's see if they can actually get out of there. They do manage to get a nice retreat. The rest of uh, Milkshake is not there in time to punish that rotation. So that's a nice open lane that will be co constantly pressuring uh, in favor of Mabico's bad. And that's going to be a point that Milkshake are going to have to be dealing with for the rest of this match. And it's still relatively early in, a, uh, in this game, only 10 minutes in. And still, it's... It's, there's still a lot to play for, but uh, Mavico's bad are in a really good position right now. So, OG going for the seven sided strike to complement those Iron Fists. And he's going for the movement speed bonus as well. So, not total DPS as yet. I mean, level 16 is where we can really tell what Bill oh, is. He's going to be punching people real hard, and he's going to be yeah. dashing in at the same time. He's going to yeah. be dashing all around, uh, especially as you mentioned, that 16, getting the extra flurry at the end of your radiant dash when you're using it on an enemy. That is going to really just pump out uh, quite a decent amount of damage. As a little bit of a gank onto this Dahaka. He's just going to back away thanks to that. Uh, he's just going to just race car himself away. And the phase shift came in uh, from Crazy Dave on the bright wing there just to try and uh, get the pick that they need. But yeah, that race car is just so, so strong. Rush Dogger is an extremely strong talent. Uh, sorry, extremely strong passive. And uh, Dahaka's utilized it to perfection. But now Azog the Cat decides to power slide through Tanner. There was a roadblock in his way and he just went straight over it. Meanwhile, that keep, that uh, sorry minion wave in the mid lane that was taken by the Mad Cos Bad Lads is now being dealt with. The Tribute now spawning in the bot lane. And I think the Mad Cos Bad Lads are content to give this one over because Milkshake... We have a stage dive. Do have a stage dive incoming onto the boss. Oh, but the seven sided strike jukes it away. In comes the Reign of Vengeance. Didn't get as much value, but it's going to be a game of throws in the boss pit. And Milkshake have pitched it out from under. Mad cause bad. This could turn the, the tide of the down. fight. Valor has dropped and the cocoon as well. And there goes the Harker. Oh, it's a wow. What's that? A zero for four trade. This is where Milkshake get back into the game. That's exactly what they needed. Wondering what the EDC was doing, moving towards the bottom side of the map, but then I saw that he had the stage dive. They were very much prepared to go in on that play, and it was an absolutely incredible engagement coming out from Azog the Cat. And as I mentioned, throughout this, the start of this game, they're able to get that Valor, and then it just falls from there. They're able to just cut down the, uh, the hope generation, or even just cutting out the oil right at the source. And it's... It, that composition from Mad Because Bad, it works as a, as a very cohesive unit, but you take one of them out of it and it really starts to fall apart and that's exactly what we saw there. So it's a very good opportunity for Milkshake to start to get back into this game. They're still a fair bit behind and it looks like they're going to get caught out in rotate in oh, the That's unfortunate. They had the advantage there. They just stayed for way too long. The EXP for a brief moment was in Milkshake's favor there. But OG is just so, so fast on the Karazim, able to dash through, get that movement speed bonus thanks to Quicksilver. And he's able to catch up to anybody who's running away. So well done, Mad Cos Bad. They're both at level 16 now. So they've lost a three level advantage, but they're still in this game. It's 6v4 in terms of kill count, but that boss steal. That was huge in terms of momentum shifting. It is, but now that this Cassia is down and members of Mad because Bad are moving towards this boss, they really can't contest this. They want to try and make some kind of play towards it, but the Cannot Cocoon do. is going to get used, but now Azog is in a very awkward position. He's just getting absolutely demolished. That 7-side strike getting so much value there, and 
This is going to be a very tough defense coming out for Milkshake. They've got the boss pushing down uh, into directly onto the core of the... Oh! Uh, the Emerald Wind has to get used <laughs> as well. The Emerald Wind was almost disastrous there. OG got himself into a good position and almost pushed him back into the Milkshake team. Now he takes way of the 100 fists. And this is where we can confirm that Karazim is going to be dishing out so, so much damage. Like a punch on, on King's Cross. He's throwing those hands. Here we go. The Haymakers are coming in. Now the boss, they're pushing on the core. <laughs> Real Crystal Aegis saves him in the end. They're dashing away as well. And the entertainment strike to land onto Coffee Clubber on the Grey Main. That could have been disastrous. The boss they're is doing too much. The boss of it. OG has gone down, as does Oriel. The Mad Cos bad lads, oh. the boss is going to do it for them. They lost three members in that fight, and in the all-in kamikaze strats are going to win it for them in the end. That was almost an absolute disaster, GL Phoenix, but they stay composed and they walk away with the victory. Yeah, in the end, it was that keep that they managed to take on the bottom side uh, fairly early on for uh, Mad Cos bad that ended up being the very big factor uh, in that last push because the boss was pushing directly onto the core. There was very much a uh, very little room for error that uh, Milkshake had and they needed to essentially wipe them out before they even made it to the core and they were not able to get any kind of position. They were still waiting for the mm. ETC to come back and yeah, we're looking at the damage numbers. Cassie was able to output a hell of a lot of damage but just the amount of sustainability and durability coming out from that uh, maybe because bad lineup had was a little bit too much in those very... Mm congested team fights well talk about congested speaking of that boss throw in the top lane i mean that <laughs> that was a, that was congested the milkshake brought the boys to the yard and they walked away with the boss and almost turned the tide back into their favor nevertheless they walk away tasting bitter defeat but mad cause bad they'll progress through with a victory and now we have to pick an mvp gel phoenix it's it, this one's going to be really tough i thought everybody on mad cause yeah. bad pulled their weight yeah, it's a real tough one, especially when you have a composition like this where, yes, the Valor is relied upon for the majority of the damage as we see. The Valor was at 34k, the next highest was 18, and that was a tank. You got two tanks, uh, two warriors, two supports, and then the DPS. So, yeah, you are putting a lot of faith in the Valor to be able to deal the damage to get the healing for the Oriole. But we also had the Anubara getting those very key lockdowns. We had those cocoons coming out at very good times and was a very solid front line that allowed this Valor to play so much more freely in these fights and not get too worried about that Kase who was going to be blinding her a hell of a lot. And yes, she was doing a lot of damage, but the Valor was uh, putting more... Cons uh, the, the damage that managed to... Uh, the high impact damage at the right time. So um, I'm, not, I'm really not too sure. I mean, the <laughs> Valor uh, pulled her weight. The Nubarak pulled her weight. It was always fun seeing the Karazim throw hands, so I guess I'll leave it up to you there, kid. I, I, I like the way Tanner was able to execute those lockdowns on the Anubarak. The Burrows were on point. As with the Impales, I think there were three fights where people were, were trying to disengage, but Anubarak, uh, Tanner on the Anubarak was able to just lock them down, closing the gap with Burrow, landing the Impale. That allowed all G to Radiant dash up and then just hock out those Haymakers. So I'm going to give it to Tanner the Spanner. So well done. He walks away with the MVP vote for this round. But don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We've got more hots coming at you. But for now, I'm going to pass you back over to the Kiwi Sensation Christ. <laughs> Caught him off guard, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god! Sorry about African. that. I apologise for breaking <laughs> everyone's ears just there. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Kit Fox. I uh, now know how Skimmy feels because uh, you do that to him every <laughs> every week as well. Well, what a match that was! Milkshake versus Mad Because Bad settling the score from last week, and Mad Because Bad will chalk. Uh, they'll put a one. Uh, oh, up in their place, uh, well, well, in their records there uh, against Milkshake. Now, uh, we've got one more match to come. Uh, I'll just have a quick look at the bracket. In fact, let's get the bracket up on screen for you, uh, which is the mouse to press, uh, so that you can see exactly where we are, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with the situation tonight. We've got uh, one match that we're waiting to finish off, and it's going to be, what, Onyx uh, Esports versus Rolls, Rolls Unspecified. Uh, and then we'll be bringing you the final match of the evening uh, once that has been generated. So uh, don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back after this break. And remember, after that last game, we'll be doing the raffle draw. So exclamation mark, exclamation mark gimme to find out details about how to enter that uh, and what to do uh, in order to do it. Uh, hint, hint. 
You've got to be a follower. Uh, so we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for sticking with us.
Hey, ladies and gentlemen, just uh, a quick update for you from the bracket. You'll have seen on screen that the final round has been generated. Now, even though we've had Mad Because Bad on stream prior, uh, we're going to be bringing their match against FTD against you. Because if you have a look at what's uh, going on in the bracket, FTD, a brand new team that we haven't seen in the HGC here in ANZ until tonight, have won all three of their prior rounds. So uh, give us a couple of minutes just to set that match up for you and we will be right back with that mad because bad versus ftd